If you can believe it, we're actually looking ahead here toward the next week or week and a half in March still at the possibility of something with some tropical characteristics developing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this very special video because hurricane season has begun. I'm not saying that we're going to have a big hurricane in the Atlantic or anything like that. That would be uh, just crazy for March. And this is Thor News Hurricane video number one. Of 2017. March the 6th, 1908. That was the last time we had a tropical cyclone that formed in the Atlantic in March, and records have been kept since 1851. So this situation is pretty unusual. Now, I'm just as shocked as you are. Well, see, ooh, it's getting named with an A. The GEFS ensemble looks fairly bullish on developing subtropical storm Arlene. That's right, we're in the A's. That means hurricane season has begun. Get your hurricane pom-poms, bitches. We've got a video message. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... Welcome to Asteroid Fight Club. I'm your host, Thor. Today we have a... Yeah, so hurricanes don't usually start for months, man, like August. And now we're getting tropical activity possible in the Atlantic in the next week or so. So once again, my solar and weather science theory of holy crap, things are really weird is validated. That is awesome. Don't worry, my YouTube salary of $10 a month keeps me humble. <sighs> so yeah, is it going to hit the Atlantic and put everything underwater like the end of the movie AI? No, most models have it just kind of drifting off to the east. I'm going to pay Africa visit, I guess. But who knows? This thing is wild. And the weather's been wild. The BZ's been tipping like crazy. <laughs> and so this video is simple, man. Just saying hurricane season is here. All right. So um, just to give you a reminder when the peak of hurricane season is, it's like August, September. So we're way out of that realm with this one. It's working its way westward just to the north of San Juan. Notice the model now as we put it in motion starts to close this off as an area of low pressure. That's step number one to getting a tropical cyclone. But the big step that you need is to have a, that area of low pressure get its energy from the latent heat of condensation. If it doesn't do that, but it gets some of its energy fueled by the contrast between cold and warm air, you have what's called a hybrid, a subtropical low, and that tends to follow the jet stream up the Atlantic coast. As you can see, hurricane frequency is not <laughs> really that prevalent in March. In fact, March isn't even on the list. June 1st to November 30th is where we expect to see tropical cyclones in the Atlantic. We'll certainly be watching this one to see if it becomes a record breaker. And just the other day when I was watching these models, because I'm a nerd like that, I was saying, well, this crap's weird. And really, that's my job at Thorn News. I look at things and go, well, that's weird. I go off my gut and I maintain an element of skepticism. So yeah, when I was looking at the thingy the other day, I was like, that's weird. What is that that's just kind of hanging off the Atlantic? And so now it could be a subtropical storm, a tropical storm, a depression, a tropical depression, or could it be a full-on hurricane months before normal? Ari says that would be too crazy. Well, you've got tropical lows and subtropical lows. So basically a tropical low, it's nice and compact. It draws a lot of its uh, moisture from the warm ocean water. It gets a lot of its strength from there. And then you've got subtropical lows, which it basically should be called a kind of tropical low or a semi-tropical low. I don't know why they call it subtropical, but um, it's basically right in between a regular storm system and a tropical one. So this one will have some fronts, which a tropical system doesn't have, um, but it will also draw in from... Uh, some strength, at least, from the warm ocean water, whereas a regular low-pressure system wouldn't do that. I hope that made a little bit of sense. And then we got another thing forming up by the Atlantic. It almost looks like a binary planet system. This is weird. I was looking up, talking about brown dwarfs, sun babies, and hurricanes. Months in advance. It's like Galice 229B. A is a star. I think it's a red dwarf, or a sun baby, or a super Jupiter. Who knows? Let's see if we can find some fun information for your face. Wonderground has an excellent blog called Category 6. Here's where all the super weather geek nerds go. See, the weather's weird, man. Peru's still getting beaten. And then we got a massive nasty cyclone that is a giant threat to Australia. Well, for several days, we've been keeping a careful eye on a cluster of thunderstorms out in the Coral Sea. Well, this cluster of thunderstorms has shown some organization. The last 24 hours 
has now been named Cyclone Debbie. Tropical Cyclone Debbie is taking aim on the Queensland coast. The winds at the last report, 65 miles an hour, gusting up to 85 miles an hour. It's gaining strength as it nears the northeast coast of Queensland. And it's moving to the southwest at two miles an hour, so a very slow-moving storm. And its potential is to make landfall uh, somewhere time on Monday between Mackay and Townsville. But it is expected to impact the Queensland coast and make landfall by Tuesday morning as a strong Category 2 U.S. storm or a weak Category 3 U.S. storm. It will give a significant storm surge and bring a phenomenal amount of rain, up to 500 millimetres of rain in places, and add on with the damaging winds, it could cause some severe impact. Look, the fine line is that this is going to be a pretty good wind impact with winds of about 100 to 110 miles an hour at landfall, and looking at some very, very heavy rain, especially right along the coast, 8 to 12 inches there, just a little bit inland as much as 5 to 8 inches. So this is also a region which has seen quite a lot of rain in the past week or so. so the big problem, of course, is that this is the most arid continent on the planet and when you put that much rain in that kind of an environment it is going to run off very quickly so flooding definitely going to be a problem we're certainly going to be keeping our eyes on the folks down under yeah it looks like a monster man it looks like a giant Cthulhu crab of chaos there's a big fargan swirl lots of rain for qld you know the weather's weird getting weirder i'll have to do another sun video soon i imagine it's true oh yeah look at that thing Whoa. Yeah, it's got a crazy eye. Beware of the hurricane with the crazy eye. All right, Aussies. Better toss another shrimp on the barbie and then get to your bunker. Look at that. Same crazy eye in Texas. Whoa. See? Ooh. All right, so stay tuned. That looks nasty. That looks real nasty. Yeah, the sun looks weird. Giant coronal hole. Sun looks weird, man. Look at that. Normally, the sun doesn't have a giant gray block in front of it. I don't know if you knew that. It's true. The coronal hole, man. Coronal hole. Talking about the coronal hole, man. Earth facing. Solar wind. It's crazy. BZ tipping. I be purple juice dripping. BZ tipping. Rolling slow. Lean back. On the lean. Yeah, coronal hole, man. Coronal hole. Solar wind. It's solar windy. All right. Yeah, this video's all over the place. I'm talking about brown dwarfs. Solar winds. BZ's tipping. A very scary cyclone headed to Australia. That ain't no joke. All right. This video's done. Peace out. God bless everyone. Let me recap. Last year... I mastered hurricane reporting and minorly mastered hurricane. I don't know if you know this. I'm going to tell you. I was one of the first people last year to call Hurricane Matthew. And I said, oh my God, this could be horrible. And it was. It put hundreds of towns and roads underwater. Some that still have not recovered. Now, in full disclosure, I think I was second. I was like three hours behind BP. Now, I came to the conclusion based on my own knowledge and research. Uh, but for people who knock BP, he does a really great job on a lot of subjects. In my opinion, and in hurricanes last year, I'd definitely give us both an A+. Plus.